Kia ora, I'm Simon Hampton. Welcome in to Kiwis Abroad on Sky Sport, where we take an in-depth look at the Kiwi athletes plying their trade around the world. Well, Happy New Year. It's great to be back in 2021 and we've got a bumper episode lined up to kick things off. Stephen Adams has been impressing early on in his time at the New Orleans Pelicans. Just the other day, he hit his first career NBA triple-double against his former team, the Oklahoma City Thunder. It prompted his head coach, Stan Van Gundy, to say that Adams has been carrying this Pelicans team all throughout this season. Well, Stephen Adams joined me here on Kiwis Abroad just a few days ago and started off by talking about how life has been settling in to his new team. Uh... Yeah, it's been great, man. Um, organization here has been really welcoming towards me. Very loving. Um, yeah, good stuff. Has it been trickier, do you think, gelling with new teammates when there's been a shorter off-season and, and a shorter pre-season? Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, obviously, it's just one of those things. The more time you get to spend with someone or a team or whatever, um, the better off you'll be, so... Kind of shortening that kind of limits your time to experiment if that makes sense we kind of kind of got to do a lot more patching and games yeah it does seem like you guys have made a pretty solid start to the season though so things are are gelling nicely all things considered uh yeah i mean what are, one of the tough things for this season is um making the adjustments and getting better throughout the season but we also producing wins right like that's uh that's gonna be the difficult part because we we, st we still again we have to figure figure each other out and the system and whatnot and all that sort of stuff right so that's a major difference from this season than any other season going back to oklahoma city you're known for being popular with the fans and getting out amongst the community there has it been harder when you come to a new team and because of covid you can't uh, make that bond with the community immediately because you can't go and do that stuff and you, you can't interact with fans? Yes. Yep. Um, yeah, bro. <laughs> I mean, you just... Yeah. You hit it all on the head, mate. Yeah. It's the biggest uh, one is COVID. Uh, have, you, have you done anything to try and interact with the fans even though you can't have that sort of face-to-face -face contact? Uh, no, I haven't, actually. Um, I'm not really big on social media. Um, unfortunately, but um, when you know when it all settles down and whatnot, and we're allowed to kind of walk walk out and about, uh, that's where I'll, where I'll probably engage a bit more. Um, I, I do better with uh, face to face interactions. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and just for fans back home, what what can can and can't you do? I guess with with roaming around, and are you allowed to go and have a look around New Orleans and? At Mingle, or are you quite strictly locked in, in in a bubble, so to speak? So, in a nutshell, um, no. You go from facility back home, and that's it, right? You are allowed to go in certain areas that they've, uh, you know, secured, like uh, some restaurants and whatnot. But uh, the risk for reward just doesn't really make sense, um, or not for me at this time. Maybe for some other players or whatnot, but basically it's just facility, home, and then stadium for the game, right? Which is fine. It's all good. How, how do you keep busy in between games and, and trainings then? Um, just doing a bit of a, oh, I got a worm farm now. Oosh, at, at my house, bought some worms the other day, some compost worms. Um. <laughs> And also have a microscope so I could check out all the little bugs in the soil and whatnot. Just real nerdy stuff, bro. I'm going a bit mad. Nutch, no, nutch. No, no. Help me. No, uh, the, the worm's going well, though? Yeah, for the most part, mate. It might be a little bit cold for them at this time, but, you know, surely they'll, uh, they'll warm up soon. All right. Um, obviously, you know, you're with Oklahoma your whole NBA career, so you, you sort of knew how they operated, you knew how they played, um, you knew that system inside out. What's been the biggest difference, do you think, coming across to New Orleans? Um, I think it's mainly uh, just personally myself just getting out of that routine of, you know, 
Yeah, because you create your own routine whenever you're in, uh, when I was in Oklahoma, right? Just every single NBA player does, right? And so it's just getting out of that routine. That's only been the difference that I've seen. Um, everything else has been very professional. Um, you know, it's, it's all the same stuff, bro. The plays, if you're talking about the basketball side, it's, it's all going to be the same, relatively the same stuff, right? So that the basketball side is a bit easier. The off court seems a bit more complicated, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, do you have to change your playing style at all coming across? Uh, no, not at all. Um, I think I've made a pretty good name for myself just for playing hard, I think. You know what I mean? Um, just trying to hey, just trying to win games, to be honest, mate. Whatever I could do for the, for the team. Um, yeah. It's just that sort of mindset. So if they ask me to change any sort of, um, you know, if they want, say, me to shoot, Threes, Stan, let me shoot threes. No, just, <laughs> no, but if he wants me to shoot threes, then like I'll just go and do it, right? So, no, no change in mindset from my end. Um, but yeah, have you been working on your three point shooting there? Um, no, well, I'll shoot some here and there for fun, but I think free throws are my biggest issue because I shoot them a lot more in games. <laughs> Then threes. So I tend to focus on them more. Yeah. What, what's it like working with um, one of the NBA's biggest young stars, Zion Williamson? Oh, it's good, bro. I mean, impressive athlete. It's it's awesome just watching him uh, just move about, mate. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Specimen. I mean, this this team's full of young stars, isn't it? Zion, um, Ingram, Ball. Um, there's so many. Is it exciting? And do you relish this opportunity to come to a team uh, where you've signed a, a contract extension for a couple more years, sort of come to a team that's trending upwards? Yeah, it's what's good is that um, when I first came in, the, the mindset of the players, because it's a good thing to have, like, you know, good players and talent and whatnot. But... The, their mindset is very important. Um, and, man, they, they just want to win, which is good. Um, and they're willing to do, like, the dirty work. And, you know, some of the dirty work, like, some players don't want to do, but they, they're all about it, right, which is cool. And so that's that's been a huge positive tick in my book, right? So, because I don't really look for, like, the whole, like, oh, well, he scores 30 points. Like, that stuff's all great, okay? And it, it does, you know, does win your games and whatnot, but... The, all the little details that will get overlooked, those are huge, right? very, very important. That, yeah, that, those are the things that I look for anyway. Kind of tells me a lot about the players and whatnot. Mm. Um, New Zealand fans are always interested in, in the national team and particularly um, going into a, an Olympic year, obviously, with the Olympics being rescheduled to this year. The Tall Blacks hoping to qualify for the Olympics. Is that something you've talked to Tall Blacks coach Piero Cameron about? And, potentially, you know, going to the Olympics and, and maybe even um, going there alongside your, your sister, Valerie? No. My, my other sister's uh, in the Olympics as well, mate. Old uh, Lisa. She's in the Paralympics. She's going, which is great. By the way, just a family update. Um, no, I haven't talked to Piero. Um, but, yeah. Is, is that something you'd be interested in, though? Um, I don't know, mate. It's... It's too much of a bloody kerfuffle at the moment. You know what I mean? It's all up in the air. There's no point me trying to say, like, yes or no at this point, right? But all I could tell you is that, no, I haven't talked to him. Um, and, yeah, that's it. And just, just finally, before I let you go, obviously New Zealand's got no COVID cases at the moment. Um, it's in the middle of summer. Uh, there's, there's crowds at sporting matches and everything like that. Are you particularly homesick at the moment? Um, not really. A um, bit jealous, yeah, because everyone, uh, you know, the boys send me, like, videos and they're, like, socialising and whatnot. They're just doing normal stuff. But other than that, nah. You know what I mean? It's all good. Uh, got, got some challenges over here, mate. Good on you. Thanks very much, Stephen. Really appreciate it, mate. Yeah, sweet as, bro. Cheers. 
Stephen Adams there. Now, some of you may have noticed a little bit of a shiner on my left eye during that interview. I, I took a bit of a tumble on some ice here in New York uh, just a few days before recording that interview with Stephen. Great timing on, on my part, but a few bruises and, and, and a couple of stitches later and, and all is healing well. Anyway, certainly hard to think a Tall Blacks debut is coming anytime soon for Stephen Adams. I, I think when you look at the schedule for the Olympic qualifiers, they're, they're currently scheduled to take place between June 22nd and July 4th, with the Olympics themselves set to start July 23rd. So that means that those qualifiers would clash with the later rounds of the NBA playoffs. Uh, who knows how far the Pelicans will go in the playoffs or, or if they'll even make the playoffs. Uh, but I think when you couple that with, with the fact that there's, there's so much uncertainty around what the world will look like in July with this pandemic, that I, I think uh, there's just a few too many question marks uh, around that if we're, we're hoping to see Stephen Adams uh, represent the Tall Blacks anytime soon. Well, to speak a bit more about the NBA and a bit more about Stephen Adams and how he's doing down there in New Orleans, Pelicans beat reporter for The Athletic, Will Guillory, joins me now on Kiwis Abroad. Will, thanks very much for your time. Uh, what have you made of this Pelicans team so far this season? Man, I, I think, you know... There's been some up and ups and downs. I think, you know, they're still figuring things out with Stan Van Gundy, their new coach. Uh, you know, there's two new starters, obviously, with Steven Adams and Eric Bledsoe. So there's been a, you know, a growing process. They're figuring some things out. But I think uh, there's been a, some real progression in a few areas that Stan Van Gundy's happy about. And I think they can build upon that. But, uh, you know, it's just a matter of now just sustaining some consistency. I think that's the biggest thing with this team. They're kind of up and down so much. And if they can get a consistent base of who they are, then I think they can start, you know, stacking up some of these wins. You just touched on that consistency because I, when, we, when I spoke to Stephen Adams, he talked about how, how difficult it was to gel with new teammates uh, when he was traded just before the start of the new season and they didn't have a long pre-season and that they were going to have to gel sort of throughout the season. So I guess with that in mind, can you sort of expect a bit of that inconsistency early on as this team figures each other out? Oh, there's no question. I mean, this season is so weird. It's so many different ways with the COVID protocols and things starting later than usual. And I would say the vast majority of teams during normal circumstances, they will probably meet up, you know, three to four weeks before training camp even starts to get a few pickup games in, just to get attached some faces to names, you know, get just an understanding of how to play together. And that's before you even get to training camp. I mean, these guys weren't even allowed to be in the same building until – the start of training camp. So, you know, a lot of these guys, they're introducing themselves right before a scrimmage, you know, so it's a very strange circumstances. I think a lot of the timeline is pushed back as far as, you know, establishing chemistry, learning how to play together. So I think it's going to take some time, especially when you have a new coach bringing in a new system and basically an entire new staff. So I think it's going to take some time for this Pelicans team, but I think the good thing for them is that they have some guys at the top line, who they could depend on every night to, to bring in and give them a chance to win. But I think when you're talking about competing against the best teams in the West, you got to have some established identity, and I don't think they're quite there just yet. Mm. Well, one of the, the new guys they brought in is, is of course, Stephen Adams. Uh, he had a, a, a triple-double the other night, um, <laughs> which is a big occasion for him. Um, what, what have you made of him so far in his Pelicans career? I think Stephen has been incredible for this team. And I'm not just saying this because I'm doing an interview with you right now. I think he's been the third best player on the team. I think he's been really good on both ends of the court. I think when the Pelicans acquired him, they expected him to make an impact defensively, you know, protecting the paint, hitting the defensive boards. Uh, he really hitting both offensive and defensive boards. We know he's such a big body in the middle that you could depend on every single night. One of the most reliable role players in the league, you know, for the past five, six years. But I think he's added a lot to them offensively. I think you mentioned the, the triple double he had the other night. Uh, you know, just being a guy who they can who can play off of Brandon Ingram and pick and roll. I think he's fit in extremely well, much 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 better than I thought he would this early on. And I think yeah, he's been an incredible addition. I think you know there's still some times where him and Zion are taking up the same space on the court. They got to figure that thing out. Uh, but I think, you know, he, he's been really good uh, helping them in areas where they were really weak last year, you know, protecting the boards, protecting the paint, being a guy who can lower the turnovers, uh, being a guy who you can depend on in pick and roll situations. I think he's played extremely well so far. Well, well the new coach, Dan Van Gundy, said that he's been carrying this team so far this season. Would you agree with that? 
Yeah, I think, with the, like I said, the newest identity they're trying to establish, where they're being a the defense first team, a team that can protect the paint at all costs, being elite rebounding team i think he's brought all of those qualities to this group i think especially uh i mean they're number one in, in rebounding rate right now which is crazy last year they were nowhere near that they were the worst rebounding teams in the league last year and all you do is add steven adams to the equation and that changes everything and i think it tells you a lot about what type of player he is and just how much he understands who he is uh, i think that was the big thing bringing in a role player who knows exactly who he is how to make an impact and how to fit in with other guys. Like you said, it's taken some time because he spent so much time in OKC. That's all he ever knew was playing in OKC. And now coming to a new city, new team, new coaching staff, it's going to be some time for him to adjust fully. But I think he's played incredible so far. And I think, you know, they don't win a couple of the games that they've won without him. Well, you cover this team every day. You speak to these players all, all the time. What's the vibe you're getting uh, from, from the rest of the team about the impact that, that having a guy like Steven has had on this team, on the court, and also just the character that he is uh, being around the team? Yeah, I think that's the first thing you mentioned. That I think everybody just uh, falls in love with the character, Steven, when he comes in. Because you got to hear about him, and then you don't really know it until he's in the building and just how funny he is because you don't expect a guy that massive <laughs> to be as hilarious as Steven is. I mean, we have fun with him all the time on a Zoom calls. He, he says something funny literally every time he opens his mouth. So I think the guys love having his presence in the locker room, a guy that can lighten things up, a guy who can get along with anybody. You know, it doesn't matter what's your background, where you're from, how old you are, how young you are. Steven gets along with everybody. And I think that's an extremely valuable asset in the locker room you know, especially during times like this where, you know, got, these guys are spending an extreme amount of time together. You know, you don't get to go out to dinner with your friends on a road trip or you don't get to go out to a party. You know, these guys are with each other basically 24-7. And having somebody like Steven you can enjoy being around, I think that makes it a little easier. And then when we're talking about on the court, like I mentioned, I mean, he's a guy who makes such an impact in the paint, a guy who can rebound, a guy who can defend the rim. I think those are two qualities that are extremely important for this group. And I think he's added that that added, you know, just punch where it's needed for this team. So I think he's he's been an extremely important piece all around. The, the Pelicans wasted no time in inking him to a new, new extension as well, two seasons beyond the, the final year of his current contract. So three years in New Orleans. Uh, is it too early to say that he's justified that contract extension? Oh, not at all. I, I, I love the I love the contract when they signed it. Personally, I think it was a lot of questions as far as playing him and Zion together. Can you get enough spacing? Are you going to, you know, be mucking up the paint for Zion when Steven's in there? But, I mean, for all the reasons I mentioned, I think he's a, an extremely valuable role player. He's played in so many big games throughout his career. He's and People forget how young he is because he's. it feels like he's been a part of our lives for so long. He's still only 27 years old. So he's he's right smack in the middle of his prime. Uh, I think he, he's having him kind of gives you that identity as a – defensive rebounding team, a team who can keep teams away from the rim. Uh, I think it's extremely important to have that. So, yeah, I, I think it was a great signing. I, I think, you know, they're still learning how to make him work with all of these other pieces. But I think having someone you can just depend on every single night, the way Steven brings it, I, I think that makes life so much easier for everybody else on the roster, especially when you got such a young roster as well. It's probably too early uh, in the season to be looking too much at the standings, I guess. But do you think this is a team that, that can sneak into the playoffs? Yeah, I think, I mean, with the way things are going right now, who knows? With the, the COVID protocols and games are getting canceled right and left, guys are having to sit out 10 to 14 days. I, I told everybody before the season, if you're betting over under on win totals, you're insane going into this season because who knows what's going to happen with this year. But I think, you know, all things uh, equal, uh, I think this team has a lot of talent, and we know Stan Van Gundy is a coach who can get the most out of his guys. So I think when you're looking at a season where 10 teams are basically going to be in it, where you got the playing games, so basically 10 teams are going to have a chance to make a playoff run. I think this Pelicans should be right there with their talent, especially at the top end when you talk about Brandon Ingram, who's playing at an all-NBA level, Zion Williamson, uh, Lonzo Ball, Eric Bledsoe, and, of course, Stevens. Uh, Steven, I think – you know, they have the talent to be right there. I think it's just a matter of how quickly they can gel, how they can manage the COVID protocols. But I think, you know, they should be right there. I think it'll be a disappointment if they aren't. Uh, but it's just a matter of how quickly they can gel things, especially when you don't have a lot of time to practice. You know, who knows if you're playing tonight or not? Who knows who's going to have to sit out? Uh, but I think, you know, they're, they're, they're moving in the right direction. I think even with some of the inconsistencies, it's just a matter of, 
just getting a, a couple games under their belt where they feel like, okay, this is who we're going to be moving forward. Yeah, and, and touching on that, that COVID thing, obviously, um, you know, pretty concerning news this week. The Pelicans have had their game against Dallas uh, postponed. There's, there's been a couple of other games in the NBA postponed. How concerning is uh, these developments uh, to the league? I, I think it's very concerning because I think they tried to figure out a way to make this thing work without an NBA bubble. We all know how successful the bubble was, and they were – you know, coming up with zero positive tests every day, constantly, you know, throughout that bubble experience. And now when guys are out and about, they get to see their families, they get to see their friends in certain cities, they're able to go out to restaurants and, you know, maybe an event here or there. And now you see the cases going up. And now with these protocols the NBA has, you don't even have to register a positive test to be out. You could just be around someone who tested positive and you're going to be out 10 to 14 days so I think it's going to be extremely difficult for them to keep this thing going. I think they're doing the best they can. Uh, I think that we're, we can probably expect some changes soon just to figure out how to make this thing work. Maybe they put a pause to the season. Maybe they loosen up the protocols. Who knows? But I think the way things are going right now, it's not going great. I mean, even if you eliminate the postponements, we've had a few games where teams are playing eight players, seven players. Mm -hmm. They're playing a center at point guard. They're playing a small forward at center. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, but uh, I think the NBA, if, if anything, we've learned that Adam Silver as a commission, commissioner, you can put trust in. We know the people that he puts around him. They do the best as far as figuring out how to make things work for their players. But it's a very difficult time right now in America. The cases are going up. There's a lot of chaos going on right now with the government and, you know, the transfer of power right now. So I think you know, it's a lot to deal with. And it's not just the NBA. It's the entire country. It's the entire world. I mean, let's be real. So I think it's a very difficult situation to deal with. But I think, you know, if anybody can figure it out, it's the NBA. But we might be coming to the point where we have to accept that maybe they can't figure it out. And, you know, there are extreme measures that have to come into place. Uh, but who knows? When when the bubble did work so well uh, towards the back end of last season, is there is there a chance, do you think, that they could go back into a, a similar setup? I think the big concern is, is that if you go to the NBA players and suggest a bubble, uh, they might throw the biggest temper tantrum of all time. <laughs> I think as much as the guys enjoyed playing games in the bubble, I, I think they hated the idea of being millionaires, being told what to do on a daily basis. That's the last thing you want to do as a millionaire. I know if I had a million dollars, I wouldn't want people telling me what to do and where to go every day. So I, I think... Uh, making it work, I think the smartest idea is to do it with a bubble. I mean, we saw it work last year. They figured it out. But I think convincing the players to sit in a bubble for three to four months, maybe even longer, away from your family, away from your friends, having your schedule dictated on a daily basis, I don't think they want to do that again. But uh, maybe you got to figure out some way to do it with regional bubbles, maybe two to week, maybe two to week, two to three week bubbles, maybe a month and a half bubble. Who knows? But I, like I said, I mean, the way it's progressing right now, it's just not working. Like, let's just be frank. It's not working. And they got to figure something out. And, and, and just finally, you, you talk to the players about the current setup. Obviously, it's a lot more open than, than the bubble. But there are still, you know, strict protocols they have to follow uh, and all that. So but how do the players feel about the current setup? And, and how, I guess, receptive do you think they would be to, to tightening things up again? Yeah, I think what the, just the way guys are, they understand – you know how difficult the times are, so I think they're just reacting on the fly. I think they're just dealing whatever comes at them, uh, you know, especially with the, the way the schedule was set up where they were supposed to be playing every other day and you only got half of the schedule. So I, I think guys were assuming that things were going to be up in the air, stuff was going to be changing. You had to be uh, open to adjustments. So I, I think guys are just dealing with it, things as it comes at them. But, I, I mean, it has to be very difficult when you kind of don't know what's going on and when you're playing. You're getting tested every single day. You don't know – who's going to pop up positive, how that's going to affect you or your team. Uh, so I think guys are doing the best job they can, uh, but I think it's a very difficult situation. And I think for the Pelicans in particular, I think they've done an excellent job maintaining things. They still haven't had a positive test up to this point, you know, so I think they're doing the best job they can. But, I mean, the, the, the thing with the NBA is that all of these cities are different. Some cities are more open than others. Some cities, the, the positive tests are at a higher rate than others. So, you're kind of dealing with things as they go, especially when you're traveling from city to city. So it's a very difficult situation, and they're just trying to figure things out. All right. Will Guillory there from The Athletic. Thanks very much for your time. Tremendous to see Stephen Adams doing so well 
early on in his time at the Pelicans. And uh, fingers crossed as well, there aren't too many major disruptions in the NBA this season as this pandemic continues to rage across America. All right, that wraps up today's episode of Kiwis Abroad, the first one for 2021. It's great to be back. Uh, remember, you can catch plenty of NBA action on Sky Sport, including the New Orleans Pelicans uh, going up against the Los Angeles Clippers this week. That's a, that's a big game. Uh, that's on Thursday afternoon, 4 p.m. on ESPN. That's Sky Channel 60. Good double header, actually, in fact, uh, with the, the my local team, the Brooklyn Nets, taking on uh, the New York Knicks uh, at 1.45 in the early game. Thanks, as always, for tuning in to Kiwis Abroad. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.